That is Bernoulli's principle. I love doing that. How are you folks doing today? This is Dr. Hugh back for another episode. Glad you could join us and uh, for the clinic. And this week, as you know, we do this Tuesday and Thursday, but this week our theme is what is triafuel? Because we use the word triafuel, we use the word motor snorkel, and some folks don't even know what these things are, so we thought we'd answer some of those questions up front. So what is tri-fuel? Well, it's actually three fuels on one engine. So typically in what we do, people buy a gasoline generator somewhere uh, for an emergency, and then we will provide them with a motor snorkel so that they can run that same gasoline engine on natural gas and propane without making any alterations to the engine whatsoever. And so that's the main reason is because gasoline isn't available in uh, emergencies typically. Uh, here's a sign up on the screen, yep, no gas. Imagine having an emergency needing gasoline for your generator and no gas available. Well, that's a realism. People have had that issue for decades now. And uh, it's even getting worse because more people have generators more than ever. We thought after Y2K generators would go away, but they seem to be just as ever popular. Uh, and so typically, because so many people need gasoline at once, it's rationed off. They can't get it for their cars. They can't get it for their generators. Some people even get into fist fights over, uh, they'll, they'll hear that there's only so much fuel left and they'll want to get in line to uh, get it themselves. So it can get really out of hand. And what's sad about it is at their homes, they typically may have a natural gas line or they have a gas, a propane tank. And with that, especially natural gas, is basically an unlimited fuel supply, which is why hospitals and other main uh, industry, uh, industrial places will have a natural gas and sometimes a diesel generator, but typically natural gas because it's unlimited fuel supply. Very safe. Uh, propane, if someone has a propane tank at home, 250 gallon tank, you know, that's 250 hours almost of runtime if you figure uh, if it was at 80%, it wouldn't be that much, however, but it's uh, hundreds of hours of runtime is the, the basic point. And so uh, that's why someone would want tri fuel, especially like with the sugar and the gas now. Uh, actually, 10% you know, of the fuel you buy, if you look at the gas pump, it says it's sugar in it. And, uh, you know, we're putting candy in our gas tank. So, you know, uh, what does that do? Well, we know years ago it used to be a way of getting back at someone. You put sugar in their gas tank. Well, don't we have that picture of the uh, the sugar going in the gas tank? Oh man, that was a nice picture. I like that picture. All right. Well, maybe he can bring it up later. But we had we really wanted to make a graphic scene of how people put sugar in their gas tank. But uh, but we're paying for that. And so in small engines, the orifices, you know, the little jets are tiny, and they get coated with that sugar and then, uh, oh, here we go. I can't see that. It's not even there. Is that the picture? Come on. He's almost there. Oh, well, we tried. We'll get to it. Uh, but anyway, uh, with the uh, sugar in the gas tank, the orifices, the jets can gum up. And that's why a lot of engines today do that, buh, 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 the old Daffy Duck run, because uh, the sugar is interfering with the true performance of, of the engine. So uh, it's amazing. You take one of those machines and put them on propane natural gas and they'll just smooth right out. And uh, it's very, uh, very common situation. Uh, so that pretty much answers why someone wants try fuel. There's other reasons, of course, but uh, those are the basic. Uh, we're going to do an installation video uh, in a moment of a well, actually not an installation video. We're going to just shoot the generator itself this time instead of showing the video because we did the install video a couple times last week. But first, I want to do a close-up of the snorkel. Uh, this is what we talked about, the snorkel. The snorkel, a lot of the snorkels come with the, uh, the gasket that matches the exact carburetor they're going on. And not all do, but some, some, are, some are just round. Uh, this probe goes down into the throat of the carburetor past the choke plate. And so, uh, thank you, Sean, for lighting up my life. And, uh, and what happens is when the choke plate closes, this special material will bend with the choke plate 
but then spring right back. And this can be done thousands of times. It's impervious to gasoline. It's very robust. It's a it's been working excellently. As a matter of fact, do we, I think we'll go to the we'll go put this on the generator right now. So we'll cut to the generator over here. Put this back in my pocket. I got a snorkel sitting over here somewhere. Here we go. All right. So this is a live carburetor. See, this is my live hand. And so uh, we've removed our air filter assembly, and you can see the choke plate. That's chokes open and closed. So we're going to have the choke open. We simply take the probe, move it past the choke plate, slide it over the studs, and voila, we have a tri-fuel generator. Now here's what I was telling you about earlier about the choke plate. See how that crushes the, the probe? So you can still choke it and uh, flexes right back, ready to go. So now this, this carburetor is ready to accept natural gas. And that's what's patented about this product uh, after 100 years of carburation, we were able to get, receive a patent in 2013 because we passed the fuel through the gasket. And so there's no alteration of the machine. It's just a, a wonderful process. So there you have it. And of course, mount the engine regulator. And we're going to show you that too. Here's an engine regulator that, we, uh, that gets mounted on the machine. And uh, hey, here I am. I can't get up that. Oh, we want the regulator, not me. All right, so here's the regulator. It has a primer button on the back. So when you install it, you give it a little shot of gas, psst, psst, and off it goes. Here's the inlet. And this is a demand type regulator where uh, gas doesn't come out until it needs it. See? No. Whoa, that's pretty good. So uh, you know that one's a good regulator. It's a demand regulator. It mounts right on the frame somewhere wherever's convenient. So there's our, there's our regulator. And so it can be used any equipment. It can be used on uh, pressure washers. Um, one we wanted to show you though is really uh, a personal one is uh, my log splitter. Bought a log splitter a couple of years ago and uh, uh, from a big box store. I think it's a 33 ton. And uh, of course, before you convert anything to net, uh, to motor snorkel, you always run the tank of gasoline through it. So I went through that and man, the machine was going, eh, ba -bam, ba -bam. but this one log, you can see this here, uh, moved it over, tried to, to bust it on gasoline and it wouldn't go. So I moved it aside. And when we started doing this video, I just thought, Hey, I wonder if that, how that would handle this, that old log that was on gasoline when I put it on the snorkel and you can see went right through it. And not making that up, that's a true story. That, that thing bogged down on gasoline, but on, on propane, just busted right through it. Now somebody said that's impossible. Propane doesn't have the power of gasoline, which is absolutely true. There's more BTU in gasoline than there's propane. But in this case, it obviously is due to the fact that the gasoline is jetted. You have no option. Uh, the jets are set and you're stuck with whatever setting that is, any elevation you are. And with the propane, the, uh, it comes with the calibrator. You can set the mixture so perfectly that it runs cool, clean, efficient. And sometimes, and like in this case, it's unexpectedly, I got more power out of it than I, I thought I would get. And so, uh, and we thought you'd enjoy that video of my wood splitter. Now, let's see. We, uh, Still don't have any questions, I suppose. I haven't seen my producer mention anything. I have a question. Why don't we have any questions? Am I answering all the questions? Is that why we have no questions? That's the question. Oh, you do have a question. I thought, all right. I didn't see the... the, the. John, not really a question, but we do have a customer, Jack, who says uh, he loves his tri-fuel Yamaha that uh, he got from us, and he used it twice in an emergency uh, in emergency mode in my first year of ownership. So I thought uh, you'd appreciate hearing that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, what do we call those things? Uh, com uh, people, what is that called? Uh, testimonials, there you go. Oh, I love testimonials. And you hear that all the time when people finally, and what happens is someone will put one on their machine, their neighbors see it, and as a matter of fact, one of our employees, they have a tri-fuel on their, uh, their 12 kW uh, generator and the neighbors come and use their house because they're the only ones with power. Uh, okay, you had another question? 
John, we have a question from Lisa. <laughs> she is saying, why is the motor snorkel better than the adapter? Oh, why is it better than the adapter? Well, that would take some pictures really to show, uh, or an adapter. Well, I guess we got an adapter coming. Right, boy, we got two live crew. All right, so we're going back to, can you get me back to the generator? Uh, we're getting there, all right. You saw with the motor snorkel, it took up, you know, all this space right here. You see that? It took, took up 3 16 of an inch at the most. Uh, here's the adapter, inch and a quarter. Now, you notice something right away. It doesn't want to stay on there. Why? The studs are too short. So what do we do now? Well, it's pretty ingenious back 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Someone said, hey, let's make some extenders. So they made these special extenders that go on here. And these are in our eBay kits. We, we still sell, we're, we're selling off old stock of this stuff on eBay just to get rid of it because everybody wants snorkel now. But uh, with the stud extenders, you put this on. Now to put the air filter assembly back on, I could show you that. It just, it will not fit. There's no room to get it all back on there. And so uh, here's, here's the, I'm going to put this together real quick. But, and so you try to get that in there. It don't want to go. So, and you can see how tight they are with, you know, with the, without even having the adapter on it. That's because they build the cages so tight. I mean, it makes sense why waste space around the machine. So, uh, so with the adapters, people didn't want to cut their frames. We have stock photos on the website. I don't know if we have them with us right now, but, oh, here we go. There's a, nope. Uh, we have stock photos showing, you know, using a Sawzall to uh, take out a portion of the frame, which, and people, normally don't want to do that. That's actually how the motor snorkel got invented is uh, someone did not want to use tri-fuel, which, which was sad, all because they did not want to cut the frame, which we completely understood. Why, you know, brand new machine, you bring it home and you cut the frame. And so uh, with the motor snorkel, you don't have to do that. Oh, we got another question, go ahead. John, we have a question, this follow-up question from Jack. Uh, this is the fellow who had a uh, previous customer, oh. and he is saying, um, wondering why I need to use the choke when trying to start propane. Priming alone won't let me start easily. Huh. That's on propane. Let's see if the doctor can, uh, Dr. Hugh can solve that mystery. So he has to use the choke. Now you got to remember, it's a demand regulator. I just showed you that. So the engine, uh, the airflow through the engine causes the diaphragm to move. I don't know if you can hear that. So that means it's not giving up the fuel. Now, that can be one of several reasons. Uh, typically, we would ask for pictures of the install to see if someone maybe added longer lines to it, because that can have an effect on it. But um, typically, it's not necessary to, uh, to choke at all on, uh, on alternative fuel with the primer. Uh, are you, I just wonder if the priming enough. There's, there's no problem. Just, you know, you keep tapping the primer when you first start it and it could be a load block issue. Uh, and sometimes what happens is people will use a, a 20 pound cylinder that has air in it. Now, new cylinders all have air in them and they work fine on barbecue grills and people will, will say that. I use it on my grill and it works fine. I put it on my generator, it won't run. Well, it's an air fuel mixture inside the tank. And we have it on our website that shows you the actual progression. It takes like seven purgings before you get all the air out of the tank. Uh, so what can happen is you'll set the machine up and maybe it, did, it has, has half the air out of it. You set the machine up at the calibrator. Now you go back to start it again and you don't want to touch it because it works so good. People are, say that all the time. I don't want to touch it. It works so good. Feel free to use the calibrator all the time, especially like motor homes that go from different elevations, Florida to Colorado, you're going to be adjusting the calibrator uh, every time if possible when you change in, you know, thousand feet elevation. So in this case, if, if the fuel mixture has changed, may need to reset the load block to compensate for that. But don't be afraid of using the, the primer, but don't flood it. That's the main thing. 
Alternative fuel floods almost instantly if you overprime. And you know you flooded it if you smell the fuel. If you smell propane natural gas, you know you flooded it. And how do you counteract that? You turn off the fuel supply completely, crank the engine a few more times, you'll, it'll usually hit for a second, and then, uh, and then you can turn it back on and try again. But typically that's what it is, load, blo uh, load block calibrator adjustment, or the fuel mixture has changed because of the tank. Go ahead, I got it. Okay, another question, John. This actually ties into the, uh, to the previous question, I think, a little bit. So we have Eric saying, how do I turn down and regulate the pressure or feed via your carburetor? So I think he's talking about the uh, calibrator adjustment. So maybe you could show to the, to the close-up camera, uh, we have a load block here. Wait, you said pressure, though. He did say pressure. So his yeah. question was, how do I turn down and regulate the pressure or feed via your carburetor? Uh, well, the, okay, what he's probably thinking is this is a demand regulator and now he's got gas coming into it. How do you control that? Now, that's, that's taken care of by another regulator. Like on, uh, you can take a regulator off a barbecue grill, 11 ounce regulator, and use the line and bring it into this engine regulator and that's how you regulate it down. The engine regulator is not a pressure regulator. It's a demand regulator. Anyone familiar with scuba diving knows you, you only want air when you're breathing. You don't want air shoved down your lungs, and it's the same way with a demand regulator. And, and you know, demand regulators were, were built on the concept, they actually mimicked a gasoline carburetor. These act just like a float bowl. So you don't want gasoline in a float bowl constantly pouring into the engine. You only want it on demand. And, uh, and that's what the float shuts off when it's full, but on demand it goes down and carries out that process so just like the gasoline pressure going into a car you, you know you have to control the pressure prior to uh, the delivery device and this delivery device needs you know 11 to 14 inches water column for uh, perfect operation so uh, if you have really high pressure like uh, 100 pound pressure some people have well gas and they'll have 100 pounds coming they'll put a little joe on it get it down to 10 pounds uh, you still need to drop it down to typical natural gas pressure prior to the engine regulator. It does not control pressure, it only controls volume. Hope that answered that. And the load block calibrates that volume. So once the pressure is correct. That's why people ask, can, can you use this on biogas? If, if it has a hydrocarbon, if it's a hydrocarbon uh, and you can get the pressure somewhere around a half a pound uh, depending on some variables, people have used it on biogas and some other types of fuels. So we don't condone that or support it in any way. We can't give you any technical help on that, but it just shows the, the, the effect of the demand regulator. All right, another question, please. Okay, this is a second follow-up from Jack. Uh, he, he first asked, uh, can you prime too much? And then he says, uh, after you've talked about flooding, I wonder if the flooding might be with propane. Uh, by pulling out the choke, I'm probably then squeezing the snorkel, which shuts off the excessive propane flow. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a good scenario. So you should not have to choke it on alternative fuel. So, and it can, instantly, uh, it can instantly flood if you choke it on alternative fuel. Now, some people don't want to, you know, they may mount the regulator in a goofy spot and they can't get to the the primer button. So they may put their engine on like half or a quarter choke and that will act as if you're priming the back. But definitely not full choke. There's no, no need to do full choke. And if you go back to this, uh, can you go back to the uh, generator again? I want to show something. Over here. Oh, over there. I never know which way that is. Oh yeah. See I got the choke closed. Notice what they've done here. They've, they've actually provided a hole there uh, why? And even on this side, you see it's clipped. Now you may say, well, that's because of the design of the carburetor. Remember years ago, these choke plates sealed off the whole opening and it was just over flooding the engines. So then they, they realized we don't need all that choke. So it's the same principle. If you had a, if you had a snorkel on there and you put, put it, uh, if you knew how to put it on correctly, <laughs> uh, you, could, you could partially choke it like that. And that's going to that's going to create some good negative pressure on your line to your demand regulator. And so, if you know how to do that correctly, you can you can work that out. So you may realize, okay, I'll just put a little quarter choke on it, 
hit the button, and there you go. So whatever works for you. But yeah, flooding is, is a problem. It'll happen almost instantaneously. So, uh, and by the way, while we're, while we're on that picture, I had a customer say that that hole was perfectly designed for that motor snorkel and he shoved it down that hole. It's in one of our pictures, but it does not go in that hole. All right, so I hope that answered that. If you take too much time, I'm gonna play with my, my Bernoulli ball again. All right, we have a question here from Vanessa. It says, my generator has an auto choke feature. Will the motor snorkel work with this? Auto choke. All right, there's several types of auto chokes. Auto chokes, that sounds like a vegetable. Uh, there's several types of automatic chokes. And uh, if it's a soft automatic choke, just like on the Yamaha 63s, that is an issue. It, it c does not have the, uh, those chokes are too wimpy to squash the snorkel. And there's ways around that. We, we have an accessory that can uh, prime the engine, even on gasoline. You can use a, a disposable cylinder uh, if you really want that. But um, yeah, with the auto chokes, uh, it, it, we do have an override for uh, the velocity chokes. That's the ones with the black disc up top. They're velocity chokes. And it works really good. So you can still choke it. Uh, if you have a velocity choke. But uh, yeah, check with us if you're really concerned about that. It does amaze me how uh, individuals will, will be so concerned about the gasoline side when they do their first installation of the snorkel. They wanna make sure, okay, I wanna make sure everything, all three works. And they never go back to gasoline again because it's just too lousy. I mean, if gasoline came out today, nobody'd want it. You'd have to have a special license. Uh, you know, the FBI would be following you around. It's just nasty stuff. It causes cancer. It's, uh, it's just really bad. Now they throw sugar in it to make it even better. So uh, the average person does not go back to gasoline. And so if you did want to resell your motor and you're afraid that having the snorkel on there would, would hinder its uh, sale, you've seen it. it takes two minutes to put on, two minutes to take it off. And uh, you could take it off and, and, and run with the choke. But... Uh, by and large, it's not an issue, but we do have a we do have a solution. We can always solve the problem if you get with us ahead of time. And that's all I've got to say about that. Hey, I hope that's not copyrighted. Where's my ball? All right, I think we're wrapping it up. We got no more questions. Uh, well, again, we'll be here every Tuesday and Thursday at two o'clock. And uh, our CSRs are always standing by to answer your phone calls uh, at their 800 number that appears somewhere around here. Uh, hey, I, I want to start doing like a... <clears throat> and so there's our 800 number. You can see Monday through Friday. Um, website, of course, you can always email. And they're on there for live chat, too. So you, know, you don't have to wait for us to go live. Uh, our CSRs are live all day long to, to answer your questions. And so uh, you don't have to wait till Tuesday if you really have a question, but if you want to ask one live, love to have you. So uh, again, every Tuesday, Thursday at two, please come back and visit with Dr. Hugh and uh, have a great day.